Canada. Now that the Arms Against Tyranny DLC rush is uh, sort of behind us, we return to A to Z and we've hit C, which means Canada. And boy, do I hate playing Canada. Why do I hate playing Canada? Oh, I bet you'd like to know. I bet you'd like to know indeed. This is the focus tree. It's not fantastic. It used to be worse, so now at least you don't have to choose between national steel car and having an industry and sending the zombies and having manpower. You can have both. Unfortunately, the rest of the tree is still pretty terrible. We'll try to make this work. So, what will be our plan today? Well, the only fun thing to do as Canada, I find, is to kick the United States while they're down. Well, they are below us, so let's keep them there. So, our goal will be to overrun the United States and pick up the achievement. It's 1812 all over again. For that, we have to take the state of Maryland. And for some reason, Washington is in Maryland. It's not supposed to be. I think it's its own thing, but I digress. While we do that, at least I hope we can do that. We'll also try to take out the United Kingdom. We no longer have use for those overlords. And we'll see if I still have the desire and the mental fortitude to play after that. So that is our goal. Now we have several options to do that. We will have to choose Patriation and then the option to join the Permanent Joint Defense Board. But I'd rather not. This just ties us into the USA. Don't want that. We have the clubs I can pronounce because YouTube really doesn't like it. Arguably the strongest pick. And the Royal portraits the communist path now a lot of people complain you always pick the fascist option it's simply because it's best allow me to demonstrate so the communist path here good bonuses to production output the reasonable buff to our recruitable population unfortunately it leads to more industry buffs but you can never join a faction a little weak and more industry buffs so you think that is incredibly powerful you have access to incredible industry buffs as communist Canada. True, and it is entirely blown out of the water by this one focus. 2% recruitable population blows all of those industry buffs out of the water simply because that will actually allow us to have an army large enough to fight the United States early. Th that's it. My plan will be to field an army of these useless cavalry divisions and just spam as many of them out to cover the long border with the USA and then elite infantry to man the New England border where we we will kill the US Army and start pushing south. Eventually, we will expand to such a, a frontline size that the US no longer has enough divisions to cover all of it and it just completely throws off the USA. They tend to have very large problems manning the lines, especially when they get longer because they cannot get more divisions. They are stuck on disarmed nation and undisturbed isolation for a very long time and they can only get off those, I think, if they're at war but or they have to take certain focus. Anyway, it results in them being fair fairly weak. So if you are quick enough on the ball, so late 38, early 39, you can cap them relatively easily. I say relatively because it has become more difficult. The AI makes better divisions now. So let's start by patriation. As for research, uh, basic industry and some engineering. That's the usual stuff. We have some mills. We'll put three on infantry equipment. We'll make some support equipment and some artillery. We're going to need those. We'll also trade for some steel as well. Just trade with the US. It's an indirect benefit me anyway. Let's take a look at the army. There are 13 divisions here and that's about all we're gonna get until we uh, find more manpower. We have a dockyard. Let's make some convoys. We have some civs. I like starting with building infrastructure in, uh, what is this, southern or no northern Ontario and St. Lawrence. Mostly because this gives us a little bit of extra steel and St. Lawrence because it has a lot of build slots and I can ramp up with military factories a little bit quicker once I have some infrastructure there. That's about it. I usually get rid of the airplanes and then I can sell them on the international market and the international market is going to be our friend. So sell all of them at a high price. Somebody's going to buy them. We'll also start with creating an intelligence agency. Now, let me Google what the Canadians call theirs. I think it's supposed to be the Canadian Intelligence Corps. I don't know what icon they use, though. So let's go with something. Uh, that might be a moose. That'll do. Patriation is done. Let's get on to the clubs I can pronounce or YouTube's going to demonetize me. And I'm just going to grab uh, some of these departments. I just need to get five of these upgrades done so I can get two spies. I'll need two spies. Why do I need two spies? Let's get mechanical computing. If you want to fight the United States and you're on a bit of a timetable, which we are, collaboration governments are your friend. If you can get one, ideally two collabs in before you start your war, you'll 
beat them by taking Chicago, Detroit, St. Louis, Kansas City. So essentially like this half and anything west of the T in states, if you take that side, they die. We have the poorly named clubs that'll do and we'll now move over to the left here to the Royal Seroy's Commission. Free political power. And we're going to use our bank's political power to appoint Chuck Crate. He will do wonders for us. What he does is allow for these decisions. We're going to prepare for civil war. We want to keep doing these things like instantly. We, we want to keep an eye on this tab. So what we're going to do now is expand civil support until we drop below 50% stability. And I'm going to do expand military support once. Not because of the units you save. You get a couple more divisions when the civil war starts, which is good. But, and this is just a personal thing. You get to keep the field marshal. I get so annoyed when you lose the field marshal. It's not a huge deal, but it's, it's annoying to me. Industry wise, we're going concentrated for once. I know, I know. Mostly because we are on a very strict timetable. I need to pump out every piece of equipment I can before we fight the USA. After we fought the USA, it doesn't matter. And with the Royal Royce Commission, we have the political power to also expand military support. Port. Let's grab the Crown Corporations next. We'll just click expand civil support back to back. I think we need to do it a total of three times to put us below 50% stability. We need 50%, well, less than 50% to ignite the actual civil war. So that's why we want to be quick with this. The timing is helpful. Stability is at 59. We are now going to click anti-fascist raid. Stability is now at 49. And we're going to ignite the civil war. Click again. We are now at war with ourselves. All right. So we kept eight out of 30 divisions. Divisions, not bad. If you really want to cheese it, what you want to do is split off these cavalry before the war even starts and just park all of those here so we can instantly walk into Winnipeg, the closest supply hub. We'll do that in a bit and we'll just put everybody there. The Canadian army, as it is, is going to be on this side. Might be some stuff there, so could split off one unit to go investigate, but usually they don't really have anything on this side. And yes, I know this is very similar to the ISP video. I don't care because this is simply the strategy to use. And Hovlux really did a good video on it as well. So I recommend you check out that video too. Anyway, I kept my spy. Great. I've kept my field marshal. Great. Now it's just a matter of fighting other Canada. Anyway, the civil war really isn't that hard. Just make sure your army gets into position and you're going to fight along this railway, taking the railway and the supply hubs all the way to Vancouver. When you get to Vancouver, simply encircle it and wait for your focuses. And if you run into enemy divisions, ideally, you simply encircle them and bypass them. They really shouldn't be that strong, especially since the AI has a very weird habit of taking the divisions it inherits from you and for some reason turning it into tank divisions without tanks. So they tend to convert a lot of their divisions into this, which sucks. Plus, they don't even have have the light tanks to run it. So the civil war ends up being ridiculously easy. Crown corporations are done. Let's go grab war bonds. Now, one benefit of extending the civil war a little is that it gives the other Canada time to do its focus tree and they get the base focus tree. So with a little bit of luck, a lot of luck, they might get some dockyards from this or they might actually get some mills or sieves from this tree. It depends on what the AI does. So sometimes you end up with more dockyards. Sometimes you end up with a couple more sieves, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a guessing game. Don't, don't really know what what you're going to get ahead of time. Either way, though, you get free stuff. Can you really complain about getting free stuff? We need to take the Defense of Canada regulations to even continue down to commit the war. And we need to get there before the Civil War ends. So we need a little bit of world tension. We're at 5%. Now that's not sufficient. So we're going to make some. We're going to justify a war goal for Labrador. Could have done this a little bit earlier, but uh, well, I didn't. So here we are. Now, I don't want this to run its completion. I don't want world tension getting too high. If it gets to 50, the Dominion of Canada calls on big daddy UK for help. And if world tension in general gets too high, it becomes more difficult to beat the United States before they join the allies. I think they need like 100% world tension to join the allies. Let's get it to 20, 21-ish, and then we'll cancel the justification. One reliable training partner as time progresses tends to be Finland. So I like to improve relations with Finland. They tend to have a lot of guns, a lot of artillery, and a lot of support equipment to sell us, and those will prove vital. And yes, I know I could just make my own, but this isn't looking too good, and we won't be getting rid of the Great Depression anytime soon. So why make gun 
when can buy gun cheaper still we're not going to completely neglect our own industry yeah that is all going well and as soon as i can buy some guns i will buy some guns i think that's the best feature to come out of arms against tyranny besides the really enjoyable focus trees it's just super fun doing these uh shopping trips i'm also going to quickly grab mountaineers ah germany is selling artillery i think i'll buy some thank you we have 50 political power i'm going to quickly assign a chief of the army yes i know he's bad but he gives us army experience quickly i think we've reached the Vancouver will simply encircle it, but not capture it. If Vancouver falls, the civil war ends and I need to get to commit to the war. Why? Well, it unlocks limited conscription. Canada really not a fun country to play. At least I, I don't find it to be particularly fun. Could be wrong though. If you really enjoy playing Canada, let me know. Defensive Canada regulations are done and now it's just a straight shot to commit to the war. All right, I'm gonna grab a spirit of the army early. I like grabbing professional officer corps because of the compounding interest at an extra 5% army experience and cheaper land doctrines. State serves the military can be good if you're desperate for political power. Tip of the spear, really good if you intend to stick with grand battle plan spoilers i don't intend to stick with grand battle plan but yeah professional officer corps is my go-to simply because of the extra army experience it generates and more army experiences means more doctrines and better divisions sooner we also have our two spies now so we're gonna start dropping them on the us to build a spy network and we can get some collaboration governments in we'll also queue up a couple of extra divisions we'll need uh, a, a good number more than i can realistically get i think time for more shopping trips but nobody's really selling anything I want, except for artillery. What I tend to buy is artillery, some support equipment, and guns. As many guns as I can afford to buy because I will need a lot of stuff. For some reason, Finland isn't uh, making anything. Commit to the war is over. Let's walk into Vancouver. As for focuses now, we're gonna grab send in the zombies for recruital population, department of munitions and supply for mills, a bits and pieces program for more production, victory aircraft for more mills, John English for more mills, English, English. Essentially, you want to grab everything that gives us extra mills, except maybe anger shops, because this isn't that good. If they is good, send in the zombies is good. So I'll start by grabbing Department of Munitions and Supply. And the war is over. Perfect. I'll take all the horses and split them off into two separate armies. And the horses will serve to fill the eastern front line. This is just western sorry the western front line this is gonna be uh, mostly a distraction the infantry under bert hoffmeyer will set up a front line against new england and the infantry will be named after our channel members so the supporters of this channel can see themselves featured in the glorious armies of bitter steel join the membership if you want to see yourself fight on the front lines or don't if you're a coward I'm gonna create about 24 of these guys maybe 21 and then add some mountaineers and we're also gonna need like 48 maybe even more cavalry just to cover this front line it does look like we have a whole bunch of extra civilian factories so i think the other canada did some industry focuses which is excellent and uh, no extra dockyards i don't think i got extra mills so yeah they probably did a whole bunch of focuses to give them factories which is good for anyone wondering why achievements are not available is because i'm using a mod the mod just adds a name list called member divisions for every one of my channel members i get a lot of questions about this so that's that's why that is Let's Let's start our first collaboration government. It's going to hurt our <laughs> factory count by a lot, but it's important that we get that early. I did mention I was going to use some mountaineers, so I'll quickly design a mountaineer template. I'm not sure if this is optimal. It's just the appropriate combat width for mountaineers is 25, I think. I used to make them 30 width because I was apparently very stupid. 25 width fits perfectly into mountains, and they do have enough firepower to blast their way through plains and hills with all the bonuses they get, so this should be all right for my future mountaineers. Again, named after channel members. I might add some cavalry recon as well because they do boost artillery attack as well so we'll, we'll see if i do that and i think i'll use the mountaineers to blast a hole through the american defenses in weak spots all right so how is everything going more or less ahead of time on everything what do i want i could get armor trains but am i really gonna make that many yeah might as well we have 150 political power let's grab i don't need the extra manpower now so let's grab partial mobilization that should free up some civs from consumer goods and next step is going to get limited conscription but first more factories 
please. More factories to make more things. I need a lot of guns, I need a lot of artillery, I need a lot of everything. Right, we have our sieves back, so production should ramp up now. Let's also trade for some very valuable tungsten and steel. And we're gonna keep buying things. So we're getting recruitment up. I'm gonna start deploying some horses. It is a bit of a rush, so we are still building our own stuff, but mostly I am just shopping for Finnish guns and Finnish artillery. Maybe some German artillery as well. Why make a gun when can buy a gun? Yes. First collaboration government succeeded 45%. Yes. So we got a good outcome. All right. So I'd like to get a second one in. So we're building up the spy network again with two collaboration governments. And I think I can take the USA fairly easily, but I need a lot more shopping trips. Give me those guns, Finland. More political power. Let us grab limited conscription. Then we'll probably add the artillery expert to our high command and swap our chief of the army for the army offense expert. Might stop for the army theorist as well so we can get some cheaper doctrines. I'm gonna grab if day and then send in the zombies. Mostly to get more uh, factories off consumer goods, meaning I can build more things more quickly. Seems like a good deal. It's September. I think I'm just gonna start my justification. This takes 270 days. Now I'll do some quick math. Nine months. Ooh, so we've got early next year. We'll, we'll get our war goal. 3% world tension. I think that's a good deal. We also have the required spy network. We'll collaborate again. And this is going to be the last one. This is going to eat up so much of our industry as well. Oof. As well as guns. Oh my god, it requires so many guns. 3,000 infantry equipment. Another 150 political power. Let's grab extensive conscription. I'm feeling a little uh, squeamish here. Usually, and I've done this a couple of times, usually I have more divisions in terms of cavalry available here, but I have vastly underestimated the cost of this second collaboration government. And that's going to bite me in the ass. That is really going to end up biting me in the ass. That's like a significant chunk out of my production capabilities. Not to mention, I am short a whole lot of trains, which I now need to commandeer. It's not good for stability. War support's terrible. We're not going to have a good time here, but if we can kill the USA in its crib, I think we'll be fine. We have our war goal, and in four days, we start our second collaboration government. It's going to take 193 days. That's a long time. Let's take a quick stock of situation. Should be able to capture Detroit. Should be able to capture Buffalo. Much of the border is covered, but only with like one division per tile. I don't see them pushing. And if they push, it doesn't really matter because there's nothing up there. We can rush cavalry into whatever gap we see to make the line longer and longer and longer. North here, I'm already seeing a couple of gaps. So I'm going to start pushing infantry through there to create small encirclements and delete American units. They will have a very hard time building new units because they're still a disarmed nation. They're still on undisturbed isolation. And yes, I yes, I know. If you really wanted to meme this, you should have put a spy on boost ideology on the USA just to lower their democratic support to less than 95%. And as a result, they would not be able to do arsenal of democracy and you'll lock them out of a lot of their uh, superpowers, let's say. But we don't need that, I think. So we're just going to declare war. Not going to call any of our puppets in. The mountaineers are going to start their offensive moving south and then cutting in there. These guys, I see an opening here. I'm going to try and encircle that unit and destroy it. Everybody else pretty much just sit tight until we create a gap. Here, I could start an offensive, but usually the AI counterattack, well, counterattack, usually the AI attacks you first. So I'm going to wait for that. I'm going to send this cavalry in here to see what it can find. Other than that, not a whole lot going on. AI instantly attacks here. So we're going to counterattack as soon as the attack is over. I think. And the Mountaineers can go through here with like no trouble at all. So the attack on Buffalo has ended. Immediate counterattack. We're going to do the same in Detroit. If you're wondering about Alaska, Alaska does not matter. Like It takes forever for them to walk through these giant tiles. There's nothing there. The only real victory point we have here is Vancouver and we can afford to lose it. Start pushing out. Take as much land as you can. Make a very long front line, essentially. Give the AI a very difficult time managing its front lines. That's what we want to do here. Every division we kill is a division they can't replace because they have a very hard time replacing units still. Sweet. The Mountaineers should be assigned to the south. This northern section, I'll let them figure it out on their own. Ah, come on, stupid front line. Just collapse this now. Should be relatively easy. The horses are having trouble, but like I said, it doesn't matter. Now, this is annoying. They took the railway hub. Oh boy. <laughs> they're, really, they're really pushing up here. 
But again, doesn't matter. And right, that division's about to walk out of Boston. I'll walk in behind it. They will find themselves fully encircled then. And these guys are almost dealt with as well. It's just really annoying terrain to fight in, but I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Okay, Red Army's doing exceptionally well. I want to keep that front rolling forward. This is a little annoying, significantly more annoying than I had anticipated, but I'll get him eventually. It's just, it's really bad how the terrain is slowing me down here. Plus, you know, red air never really helps, but it's over now. So they're encircled. We destroy them, redeploy those troops to the actual front line. Only one thing for it, rush the VPs. Keep rushing towards the victory points. Maneuver warfare works. Just go around the enemy instead of through him and you don't lose as many men. The AI is starting to leave a bunch of tiles open so these guys move out of Seattle I move into Seattle yeah just the fact that the front line is this wide makes it difficult to manage for me but even more difficult to manage for the AI so the the micro is real and the micro is what's gonna end up winning us this 89% towards capitulation just gotta keep taking land so I think if we can get to New Orleans, we win. The horses have been incredibly valuable just memeing around in this area. I love it. Yeah, everything is like super confused right now. Not just for me, but definitely for the AI. <laughs> This is good news. This is good for Bitcoin. Ah, uh, for Bitcoin. Okay, so how do we play this? Now, I would like to take Alaska for cleaner borders. Maybe take some of New England's for cleaner borders as well. So I want the American fleet, obviously. Uh, let's see if I can also squeeze some puppets out. I'll take the Philippines. I'll take Puerto Rico, the Mariana Federation, and the Kingdom of Hawaii. And then I think I'm just going to puppet the USA. Like I would like to take Alaska, though. Alaska makes for cleaner borders and I think New England and this place and that place. Do I really want to garrison it though? No, taking any land doesn't really make sense. Maybe Alaska because it's funny and it would make for cleaner borders up north. I'm just going to puppet the USA. I'm just going to add war operations and resource rights to everything and I will have everything I could possibly need. Looking at our new and improved industry, I, I don't think we can really complain here. I'm gonna build up my own infrastructure. I am going to uh, keep training more troops, building more stuff, mills mostly, and we're gonna see if Germany would like us to be their friend. And we're gonna go for the United Kingdom next, which we can actually reach now with this massive fleet we happen to find ourselves owning. Naval invasion is prepared. The giant new Canadian fleet is in position in North Sea and Eastern North Sea. We're just going going to... Do I want my own war goal? I can just join the German war. Yep, we're just going to join that war. Go to war with the UK. The Navy, of course, can take off easily. We far outclass the Royal Navy with all these ships. I'll hopefully make landing around Hull. That's my favorite landing zone. Easy peasy. Assist the attack and head towards Liverpool. And you boys start heading south. On to Newcastle, Carlisle, Dumfries. Just take land, take land, take land. Putting up a, a solid defense of Hull. And as a result, oh, close, close. That was close. That very solid defense of Hull really Really threw me off there. Uh, that made sure that I wasn't getting any resources in. That was very... Whew. I gotta give it to Korax. It feels like the UK devotes more units to the defense of its home island, but even that little bit extra isn't gonna make a whole lot of difference. They did most certainly slow me down, though, and that was, that was a little tricky at the start. That was a little tricky. And it's done. The UK has capitulated. Beautiful. What do we want? Obviously, the United Kingdom's stuff in our territory. We'll take Saint-Pierre et Miquelon as well. That's pretty much all we want here. Maybe some stupid puppets. That's always a good idea. Stupid puppets are hilarious. And with that disgusting peace deal, we have brought peace to Europe. We have formed Scotland. We formed Wales. We've solved the uh, United Kingdom's problems by making sure they're no longer there. Europe's not as big of a mess as I'd think. Canada, unitary Canada, sits there beautifully as the new hat of the Confederated States of America, who are still my puppet, I think. So why did you change name? Ah, because you became the Confederacy. Okay, that's fair. Anyway, with that, we have shown that Canada can still do some things, even if its focus tree is horrendous. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I actually had more fun playing this than I thought I would. I uh, look forward to the rest of this series. Anyway, if any of you guys want to send me some disaster saves, please do. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. A new patch, a new DLC means a whole bunch of new saves to be done. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Enjoy this next video.